I need to take a break and get me something to eat. It's getting late. Seven past two in the morning. I just love playing these Lost 45s, but I keep messing up on this particular record. I just get too, I guess I just get too overheated. I need to put in some antifreeze, let it course through my bloodstream, my blood vessels. But <laughs> cool off just a little bit. Maybe I just need a cold shower. Anyway, how you doing? It's Mr. DJ. Still on Billboard's Hot 100 a week of October 25th, 1958. Just don't want to let this one go. There's just too many lots, 45s to choose from. Dickie Doo and the Domes. I always wanted to play something by Dickie Doo and the Domes. Their biggest hit was Click Clack. Their follow-up, one of their follow-ups to it, Leave Me Alone at number 48. The week of October 25th. 1958, it jumped 15 notches from 63. This baby's headed for the top 40. Or so it seemed. Dickie doing the dumps, the mastermind, the, the messiah, the person behind this group, Jerry Granahan. It started out as a joke, but I'll get into it in just a minute. You won't believe where this joke emanated from. Jerry Granahan was a songwriter. He was a singer back in the 50s. He signed a deal with Sunbeam Records in 1957. A year later, he came out with his first hit, No Chemise, Please, a novelty record in 1958. Sure looked good at first for Jerry Granahan. Got himself a hit record, but then his next four singles flopped. Died. But then he came across a song called Click Clack. Swan Records of Philadelphia, the legendary Swan Records. Dick Clark, so involved, had his fingers in that cookie jar. I guess he had, had, had his hand in that cookie jar, but I'll get into that in just a minute. Swan Records, they were eager to put out Click Clack if Jerry Granahan would do it, would sing it. But there was a problem. Jerry Granahan still had his deal with Sunbeam Records. He also had another deal with Atlantic Records. If he recorded Click Clack under his own name for Swan Records, he could get into legal trouble with Sunbeam. Sunbeam or Atlantic Records. Therefore, he came up with a moniker, Dickie Doo and the Domes. And he released Click Clack under that moniker, Dickie Doo and the Domes probably asking, well, my goodness, where the hell did Dickie do and the don'ts come from? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I was ready for that question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> one of the people, one of the head people at Swan Records suggested Dickie do and the don'ts because of Dick Clark's silent partnership, his, his secret dealings, his secret involvement. And it was a secret with the Swan Record label. You see, as Swan Records put out, click clack, Dick Clark would play it literally just down the street on American Bandstand. If the song was played on American Bandstand, it would become a hit. That's the way it worked back in the day before the payola scandals. Now, when the payola scandals, they hit big time in 1950, 1960, uh, Dick Clark divested himself of these interests, including Swan Records, I believe. <laughs> it was a secret joke. Dickie doing adults of Dick Clark's involvement, secret involvement with Swan Records. wasn't known to the public. Definitely was not known to the Justice Department. <laughs> at least at that time. Well, Click Clack went to number 28 on Billboard's Hot 100. Well, when it became a hit, Jerry Granahan had a problem. Now he's got to put, a, he's got to put together a real band. He's got to put together a real Dickie doing the don'ts. Therefore, he added a bass player, guitarist, bass player, drummer, and a sax player. Back him up. And one of the follow-ups to that record that I'm going to play for you is Leave Me Alone, Let Me Cry. Thank you, doing it, I do. I, one other thing about this. I read years ago, I read a fantastic biography of Dick Clark back in the 90s. Dick Clark, 
was pushing a record by Dickie doing the Domes. He played the hell out of it on American Bandstand. Rolled the single to 45 on American Bandstand. It still flopped. But that was because of his secret relationship with Swan Records. <laughs> Dick Clark was an astute businessman. Boy, he knew what he was doing. All right, let's go ahead and get on with this record. I got to shut up. This is I just got so excited reading about this. Dickie doing a Don't Leave Me Alone on Billboard's Hot 100. It, it would only get as high as 44. That's it. Billboard's Hot 100, October 25th, 1958. 